Okay, so about a month ago, I started watching Arcane, and I got pretty pretty into it, uh, which tends to happen to me. I haven't played League of Legends in, like, seven years. I thought to myself, man, this show's pretty okay, and they're coming out with an MMO soon, so, like, I'm gonna get into this lore. I'm gonna get really deep into this lore. And I went to go start doing that. There are a ton of great resources on YouTube, League has their own website, all this stuff, to get really deep into the lore. And I found, like, a lot to like over the course of my journey that I'm still on. What I found is that there's no good starting point for this stuff. Uh, if somebody were to like ask me, hey man, how do I get into League of Legends lore? I would be like, good luck, I guess. <laughs> Pick a story and go. Um, Cause there isn't, there's no like concise entry point for this. Now part of that is because the Runeterra canon is pretty soft at this point. There's lots of short stories, there's Arcane, there's the games, there's all sorts of things that feed into it. And sometimes they retcon each other. So the information is a little murky at best. But I still think there's good foundational stuff that you can do to get into the lore and then start to read and branch out on your own. So that's what this series is gonna mainly focus on. We're gonna try and start with like a wide approach and then narrow in. So we're gonna start this first video with really high level map stuff. We're gonna look at the timeline that's presented in the realms of Runeterra. The book somewhere. The published lore book. We're gonna look at the published lore book's timeline uh, from a few years ago. And between all those things, the goal is for you to come out of this first video with good foundational knowledge of like what's going on in Runeterra. And then from there, our future videos will take individual regions or individual events and we'll dive a little bit deeper into them. I'm still not gonna go as in depth as some of the lore YouTubers out there. There's just people doing it better than I ever could. But I know there's probably a lot of people like me who are pretty lost looking for this stuff. Uh, and this is really just to help them find an easy entry point to start to learn a little bit more. In case you're also hyper fixated on a game that's probably not going to come out for six years. Sick. Uh, okay, let's start our map view. Go! The world of Runeterra that we're commonly presented with is divided into two large continents and a few collections of islands. These two continents are the continent of Valoran to the north of the map and Shurima to the south of the map. Across that map are 11 or so distinct regions that make up the various high level cultures of Runeterra, so to say. These zones, for lack of better phrasing, are the frozen waste of the Freljord, where nomadic tribes roam a tundra area and secrets lie buried beneath eternal ice that we'll find out about in the timeline. Demacia, a kingdom founded to provide its citizens a respite from the terror, air quotes, of magic. Noxus, an ever-expanding empire seeking to unite all of Runeterra under a single banner. Ionia, a region ever focused on living in harmony with the natural world, where the layer between the spirit realm and the material world is a little more permeable. Piltover and Zaun, two cities side by side that serve as a major trade hub for all of Runeterra. Bilgewater, home to pirates and any other cultures that revolve around the ocean. The Blighted Shadow Isles, formerly a center of magical excellence, now the home to terrible spectral creatures. The secluded region of Ixtal, whom have used seclusion to shelter their ancient culture from the calamities that have plagued much of the rest of the world. The Fallen Empire of Shurima, once a continent-spanning nation, now a desert occupied by mostly nomadic tribes. The Celestial Mountain Targon, where people journey to commune with the heavens themselves and where nearly all godlike power can be traced back to. There are also another couple areas that aren't touched on in various capacities but aren't on the world map. Vandal City, for example, which is the home of the Yordle race, and the Void, uh, which is the home of the Void. But for now, we're going to stick to just talking about the world map itself. You'll get bits and pieces of history of each of these zones as we go over the timeline in the next section of this video, but future videos will go more in-depth into specific zones themselves. It's also worth noting that there are some zones on the world map that you're going to find mentioned a lot more in this timeline than others, sometimes because they're more impactful, and others just because their lore wasn't as fleshed out when this book was written. In particular, Noxus is going to be of focus, and it'll become clear why when we explain how time is currently measured, but also because it truly is basically the largest single nation currently standing, or like close to it. Ionia might have approximately the same amount of land coverage. Consequently, some of these zones are only going to be touched on very briefly when we go through the timeline in this video, but we'll visit them again in an upcoming episode. If you have one you specifically want to see covered by the end of this, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll tweak the order that those come out in. Just know that when we talk about this timeline, Noxus is going to be at the center of the conversation for a lot of it. This also means you might feel lost when we're slamming through the early parts of the timeline, specifically when we refer to stuff that's BN, 
that's okay. Don't worry about it too much right now. When we start talking about 25 BN and the Blessed Isles, that's when it's time to really start taking notes because that's when we start to really get into why the world is the way that it is now. Before we do that though, you should know that we use the Noxian calendar currently to measure time in Runeterra and the lore book Realms of Runeterra gives us a high level timeline that helps weave each of these nations together. The calendar in Runeterra is currently measured based on the formation of the Noxian Empire. So consequently, things are either BN before Noxus or AN after Noxus. Some of the events that we go over are more important than others and will be touched on in greater detail when we go into the zone deep dive videos. But for now, here's a brief overview of how we got to where we are today. Starting with 9000 BN, in Ionia, mortals and sky giants go to war, and eventually there's a race of legendary powerful beings called the Vistaya Shirei that help mortals end the war. These Vistaya Shirei eventually settle out across Ionia, and their descendants become known as Vistaya. Anytime you see an Anthropomorphic League character or somebody that looks like a blend between animal and human, it's pretty likely that they're a Vistaya. A thousand years later, in 8000 BN, three ruling sisters, Avarosa, Cyrilda, and the League champion Lysandra, go to war in the Freljord, eventually ending at Lysandra's stronghold, where she entombs her enemies and her allies in true ice. Two millennia later, in 6000 BN, settlers from a land far in the east land on the shores of Shurima and Valoran and spread out to populate both continents. The next event occurs in 5000 BN. From Mount Targon, aspects have descended, which are divine beings who help teach the Shurimans to use an artifact called the Sun Disk. The Sun Disk is used to create ascended warriors who are basically demigods themselves and help create the Sherman Empire that will reign dominant for thousands of years. 2500 years later, a small region called Akathia, to the south of Shurima, rebels and tries to leave the Empire. They turn to the power of the Void to do so, and end up unleashing a cataclysm that destroys not only their own city, but also immediately corrupts a huge swath of land. Akathia winds up being abandoned by the Empire. 500 years after that, on the day that should mark his ascension to godhood, the great Sherman Emperor Azir is betrayed and killed. The Sun Disk falls and the Sherman Empire crumbles, it's people looking to individual ascended to protect them. In 550 BN, some of those ascended have become corrupted, twisting themselves into evil beings who call themselves Darken and seek to conquer the world. The very aspects that originally taught the Shurimans to create ascended have to step in and defeat the Darken, imprisoning them within their weapons. This is often referred to as the Darken War. Shortly thereafter, in 400 BN, a warlord is resurrected and renames himself Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser tries to conquer the world using his immortal Bastion as a base of operations, However, after nearly 300 years, the various Noxai tribes manage to defeat him together and inherit all the land under his control, including his stronghold. The timeline has a break from major events for a while until 25 BN. The capital city in the Blessed Isles, Helia, is the epicenter of a magical calamity that shatters the barrier between the mortal world and the afterlife. Souls end up trapped within a field known as the Black Mist that permeates the Isles, and they become known from here on out as the Shadow Isles. The destruction of the magical academic hub that was Helia leads to various magical items spreading their way across Runeterra, oftentimes into the wrong hands, and 13 BN marks the Rune Wars, a conflict that's responsible for much of the way modern Runeterra is divided. This is a world-scale conflict that has devastating implications across every corner of Runeterra, and as these battles rage, the remaining Noxai withdraw to within the Immortal Bastion to avoid what's described as magical fallout. The most powerful sources of magic, the world runes, are eventually reined in, functionally ending the rune wars themselves. At that point, the Noxai emerge to a Runeterra that's scarred, but their people are alive, and they rebrand as Noxus, a people united. Refugees of the rune wars spread out across Runeterra, and in 292 AN, we see a collection of refugees form a nation under the champion Orlon and settle in western Valoran. Here they find a material that seemingly dampens magical abilities called Petrosite, and they create a kingdom of Demacia, a nation free from magic and any trauma that it may cause. Around 50 years later, in 349 AN, Noxus formally becomes an empire after a series of forced annexations. They elect the Grand General to lead their armies and continue to slowly expand their borders and their influence. 772 AN, on the strip of land that connects Valoran and Shurima, merchant groups quickly excavate swaths of land to help facilitate faster trade. In doing so, they accidentally sink half the city down into the caverns below. The portion of the town that remains unsunk becomes known as Piltover, with the undercity of Zaun toiling below. Around a similar time in 787 AN, the Buru people on their eastern islands grant the various outsiders who wash up on their shores refuge in the southern portion of their lands. This settlement eventually becomes the pirate city of Bilgewater, Ruinterra's closest approximation to Tortuga. 
Now we turn our attentions back to Noxus, nearly 200 years later, when the Grand General Borum Darkwell orders Noxus to attempt to occupy the island continent of Ionia. This spawns a fierce war between Noxus and the Ionians, where Noxus feels as if the land itself is fighting against them. Several large battles take place over the span of this conflict, which lasts about five years. And the last piece of lore on the timeline in Realms of Runeterra takes place at the end of that conflict, five years later. 989 AN, when Noxus experiences a coup. The former military general Jericho Swain removes Borum Darkwell from office and kills him. Swain ends the occupation of Ionia and institutes a new governing body, the Triferix Council, a council that has a representative for each of the core philosophies of Noxus in order to help keep the ruling body less susceptible to corruption than a single grand general was. Between that and present day, which is commonly thought to be 997 AN, a few events have played out slash are playing out. The fallen Sherman Emperor Zir has been resurrected and is working to breathe new life into Shurima while he struggles with the friend that betrayed him. Viego, aka the Ruined King, awakens in the Shadow Isles and spreads his, like, undead influence across the land. And in Demacia, a powerful rebellious mage known as Silas is freed from prison and incites a magical uprising, resulting in an ongoing civil war for the city-state. Okay, in the interest of keeping this video short, we're going to stop there. Now you have, like, a good foundational knowledge of the map and the timeline. If you need a TLDR on that video, it's basically like Demacia is afraid of magic to the point where it, like mages don't have civil rights. The Frelly Horde is cold and there's scary stuff under the ice and there's a lot of nomadic tribes there. Noxus is like the empire, which sounds bad and like is bad, but maybe not as bad as Demacia. It's hard to say. Ionia seems nice. They've got nature and spirits. Bilgewater is, is just Tortuga. It's just Tortuga from Pirates of the Caribbean. The Shadow Isles used to be like a really cool magical place and now is like where Mufasa told Simba to not go, basically. Nobody knows anything about Ixtal. We know nothing about Ixtal right now. They just live in the jungle alone. Shurima used to be a huge empire and then wasn't a huge empire for a while and now the emperor's back and is basically like what happened. Mount Targon is Mount Olympus, basically. And there's been a lot of conflict, but like the pretty major one is the rune wars because it's kind of why the map is the way that it is now in our next videos we'll start to narrow down in scope a little bit and we'll also talk about where things like arcane fit in the lore uh to try and give you a sense of that canon i guess if you like this video please remember to hit subscribe and like and i'll make more